Greetings everyone and welcome. Um, it is one o'clock and I go live every Friday at one o'clock and I guess you can say that regardless of where I am, hello Diane, regardless of I'm doing well and um, and so you guys let me know how you guys are doing and today we're going to have session number two um, with Andrea at so to fit so we are going to wait and connect with her um, but if this is your first time I just want to welcome you and and um, and my name is Ann and I'm with Utique Bridal and Lifestyle Design and um, normally every Friday I, come, I go live at one o'clock to check up on you as well as to bring our creative community together um, so that we can encourage and inspire and just you know support one another to get creative and the month of August um, I'm doing things a little bit different there she is hello Andrea let me get you on We are waiting to connect with Andrea. Hello, hiya. Hello, hello. Oh, I'm hello. cut off. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you very good. much. Can you hear me okay? I can, can you hear me? Because it just notified me that I was having some bad connection. So let's okay. hope and pray that it works. Um, Hi, Samina. Hello, hello. Hey, Ross, it's Mina and Diane's on. Um, I, again, I just want to welcome everyone. Um, I go live every Friday, as you can tell, regardless of where I am, um, at one o'clock, just to make sure everyone's doing well, as well as bring our creative community together um, so that we can encourage and inspire each other um, and su support one another. And also to give our project updates. And Yay. yeah, the month of August, we're doing things a little bit differently. Normally I have a special guest at the end of the month um, and this August, the last Friday in August, we have on with the Mad Jewelers bench and she's going to introduce us to some um, metalsmith jewelry as well as teach us how to clean our diamond rings from home. And then last month in July, we had Diane with Blue Dot Sews and she um, gave us, uh, you know, a little bit about pattern, she touched on pattern making. So it was a lot of fun um, guests so far. And if you miss any, we've had several, like Kathy. If you miss any, feel free to go on my IGTV live um, and check them all out. But today we're going to meet with Andrea, session number two, um, part two of three. So, so last yes. week we talked about um, muslin versus tissue paper fitting. And we also talked about how we, you know, got our inspiration. This week we are going to talk about where we are in our project. Um, how Last week, you guys kind of got a glimpse of how I did the blocking on my pattern. This week, Andrea's gonna show us how she did her um, cutting up the fabrics and her design. And we're gonna touch upon our sewing techniques that we use as well. So, Andrea, Andrea, thank you for coming on again. <laughs> thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So, please tell us, um, where you are on your project, where are you at? Okay, you're gonna start with me. I am a, I am uh, behind you in a way if people were to look in, but as far as my process, that's why I'm behind you because my process is coming from the pattern and I am actually making fabrics uh, to fit in with my color scheme. I'm taking these different fabrics and I am making them fit. So the picture I sent you, uh, if you want to put that picture up, sure. the one that has me wearing my first make of okay. this pattern. Mm -hmm. So what I first Is this do, one? Yes, yeah. that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so what I first do is I make the first garment and um, I do my tissue fitting or I might do a muslin. I might. But I like to do it on my body when I'm going to change the design lines. And so when I change the design lines, I have to do it on my body so that I can see the actual placement of my waist, my bust, my hips. I want to see how the garment fits on me. And because I don't have 
and and if even if I did have somebody to help me fit, I probably wouldn't trust their their eye to place something on my body. So I like to use a picture to draw on in and when I see how the picture fits the drawing, then I take that and I create the pattern for the design that I want. So you can see in the back, I decided to uh, cut it in the back and have the um, peplum sort of in the back. And the center that you see, the, the line in the center, I'm using two different fabrics on that. And then you see the black line, I'm using to put some of the fabric that I don't want facing the public, I'm using it as a, uh, a face hem. And then on the front, you can see I drew the line right over the pocket. So the pocket, I'm going to raise it a little bit, but it's going to be almost right on that seam. And it's going to connect to the orange part that you see in the back. So the facing is going to come from the front and the facing is going to be a different fabric. And then uh, if you can see above and you can see where I have the yoke changed up a little bit and I am thinking about turning it into an inset sleeve. So that's why the lines are drawn right there. So I'm actually changing the pattern. <laughs> I've already done some of that. I, I don't think, so, I, I, I can't see it. You're talking about the sleeve? Well, it's kind of up there, but it's under the word live. So uh, okay. it's okay because Got it. um, okay. The next one on the the picture, now that you see how I broke the pattern up, then you'll see uh, the next picture that I Ann shows. Stitches. Blue Dot Cell says, Hi. great idea to mark up a picture. That is a great idea to mark up a picture. Well, I do that a lot because um, I can't see myself. So even if I were to make a muslin, I have to look in the mirror. I take a picture. And even with my students, I use their imaging mm -hmm. to determine their body. If they have higher shoulder, higher hip, I pretty much use the picture to do all of the extra work for me when I have classes so that they can see their body composition and where their placement of their uh, pattern should fit. Yeah, so, that makes sense. so then the next picture, sorry. Hi, Diane, good to see you. Okay, so this picture here shows how I put together the fabrics because I don't cut them out right away. I can't really cut them out because I do a lot of uh, fabric manipulation and just like Ann did with her uh, bow tie pleating and stuff like that, the fabric it gets smaller. Like this one I did on my YouTube video. This is a tutorial. Yes. The fabric draws that was so up cool. Whenever. Yeah, this here is the one that I did the honeycomb stitch. I was really happy with that. But see, now these are the scraps where I do a lot of my samples and stuff to see if the fabrics are going to come together. And then... Um, then I do like other stuff I'll do is I'm doing this here and I like the pink, but it doesn't Ooh. fit in. So if you can see up to the left hand corner, if you're looking at the screen, you see the little pink, I did some relief dye on that. So yeah. I put that on there cause I didn't want pink all on there. So I'm making sure the pink is caught up in the fabric. So I can only see glimpses and slivers of the pink instead of it all being like in your face kind of pink thing. And uh, then I did this one here. <laughs> this is that denim you see in the that middle. That dye? Yeah. I did. Is that the one you dyed? Denim. Yeah, this is the one I did. So what I did is I took that denim, the blue denim that you see next to this. Okay. And it's actually lighter than it was there. It was wet on there. I was just trying to make sure I take pictures in my process because when I get going, you guys, my phone is like, I, I forget it's there. So this here is that fabric. And so now I'm going to be using it mixed in with this. So it fits in with the yellow. See? And then I did some over dyeing of the regular fabric to bring in more colors. So over dyeing just means that I took the regular printed fabric and then I put it in the dye bath to make the white portions of it look darker like this right here. Mm -hmm. So I could get rid of some of the white because some of the white up against some of these solids kind of throw it off. So that's how I did it. And then you can see where I colored it in <laughs> to give me an idea. And I That's showed that on. 
I know it's a lot, but that's me. <laughs> Hello, Lene. And Ross Hello. with so much fabric says, nice, Andrea. Nice job. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. It's, it's not awesome. put together all the way yet. <laughs> not yet, but it's coming. It's coming together. Um, well, I have so, the pattern cut up and, and designed. So all the pattern pieces have been done like that picture has been done. I'm through with the picture, so if you want to come back on, and that'd be great. Um, but okay. all of the all of the pattern Selena. pieces have been cut into Selena the little smaller pieces. Selena says, "Very cool, Andrea." Thank you. So I guess very in a cool. way, it kind of looks like this fabric I have on. I guess I was <laughs> my mind got up this morning and thought about that fabric. Look at that. It sure did. <laughs> Roz, you don't have to sell any more fabric like this. Just have me dye it and you can uh, consign me, okay? <laughs> Looks good. Looks really, really good. Looks really good. Thank okay. You. Well, where my project is, I did get to, um, I don't know why I am not able to find it. Where is my picture? Well, while you're looking for that, I was just going to... Oh, you found it. Okay. No. Oops, that's oh, my workout. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> while you're looking for that, I was going to show people this right here. This here is called the BSR foot. It is like... Um, they. It, it's called the, um, the stitch regulator on my Bernina sewing machine. And that way you can go as fast as you can and you can do... Um, you know, meandering around with really pretty thread and stuff. So right now I'm testing it. And so I Is use that the freehand? like a, uh yeah, it's kind of a freehand. What it does is it, it is a regulator that comes on your machine or come you can buy it. <laughs> you can buy it and it actually uh goes with your your speed if you move slowly it moves slowly so if we have time i mean i'll show it on here i can do like yes let's do two, that two, let's do that um okay i guess it's i'll just you, you we'll know. do that following i'll just give you guys my quick status um it doesn't look like i have the pictures on my phone but i did post it on my instagram um post board so i did finish the front and the back um piecing it together however um i also did the back lining so that's where I am right now um, but I haven't done the front lining so the back lining I am going to and the, this is the back piece I am planning on doing the fabric cutouts in the back hello Sandra welcome welcome um, I am going to do fabric cut out in the back so I haven't started that yet um, but if you were to see the back part of my um, how I laid the fabric out on the floor. You might see like these chambray, which is this fabric actually, laying on top of that mm. blue dress. I mean, the blue, um, the back of the blue fabric. I'm going to be using this chambray blouse fabric as a remnant of this um, underneath to do the color contrast. So that's oh. the back. Yeah, and so we were talking about <laughs> sewing techniques. What are your sewing techniques? What are the new... Well, this the Marfi. We're we're talking about the Marfi Remnant Challenge, and this is you know we wanted it to be fun, expressive, and a learning opportunity, and so we incorporated these. <laughs> there you go. We incorporated. <laughs> we decided that we would incorporate some new sewing techniques into this project so that we each can learn something new. It's just supposed to be fun and expressive, and a learning opportunity. Um, but <laughs> we're going to share at the end. We did. There is a project update. Um, there, there is a prize. We'll share that at the end. But we mm -hmm. decided we're going to incorporate sewing techniques. And what are your sewing techniques, Andrea? That you well, I am we'll using. <laughs> oh, I, I've already made samples of the sewing techniques I'm using. I'm using a, a lot of uh, needlework with the sewing machine, including bobbin work with the needle, which means I am putting. Uh, specialty metallic thread into the bobbin because it's so thick and then I am going to turn the fabric over to the facing to the bobbin side and then I'm going to do some more work mm -hmm. like what I was showing you here mm -hmm. which is the um, uh, I can't even remember what the it. freehand yeah that's yes the freehand uh, <laughs> stitching on the pattern on the fabric which I am changing the color of that and then 
I kind of kind of have what you call like um, the pleading, mm -hmm. not pleading, but the uh, piping, but I don't want it to be piping. Okay. So I'm using that in this project to bring in my solids. So mm. along with this technique right here, which is the honeycomb stitch, and I use fabric on top to create that look. So this is like having eyelet, which is another process I'm going to create on these solids because I need to get rid of some of these solids. <laughs> they Hello, are, Maddie. Hello, Sandra. Welcome. They're overpowering my garments. So, mm. Is that the one yes. you use with the winged needle? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I, yes, that is the one I use with the winged needle. Yeah. And it is the one that causes the punctures in the fabric that moves the fabric to the side. So nice. create the little holes to look like, um, looks like, I would say if you use her, uh, a separate type of thread, like a thicker thread, you can't use too thick, but if you use a thicker thread, it's going to look like it's a uh, embroidery. Okay. okay. Or, uh, yeah. So yes, she has some of her videos up already on her sewing techniques on her channel. So you guys make sure you check out so to fit channel, she by has all the Lynn. yes, my AD Lynn um, on her YouTube channel. She goes live every Saturday at 6 p.m. during the month of August, so you can get the up to date um, project, um, remnant project that Andrea is working on. So you'll see all the neat, and she's fun, high energy. You'll always learn something new. So make sure you check. Her. <laughs> so make sure you check her channel out. Um, and so, do you want to show us your sewing? Sewing technique oh, that you if had you, mentioned, I mean, or show it to okay us. With it, yes, I will yes. move my sewing machine right over here with you guys so y'all can see. Okay, so um, right. I'm going to bend this down. Let me put a, a little something up in front and see. She it. is Don't the tech queen. So you guys She's can got all see the tools it. and the cameras. Yeah, it's called, it's called makeup bag. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to do this standing up because... It's the way the sewing machine is turned. Okay, so basically what this is, I can't see you seeing it. So basically what this is, is it's a process where the stitch regulator slows the machine down so you won't have to worry about trying to regulate the stitching. This is like doing appliques. So when you do appliques, you can even put some, some batting under the fabric. But when you do appliques, what happens is you need to be able to do the stitching around the edge of the applique. But this actually helps you to be able to regulate it based on how fast you can sew. If you can't do it fast, then it goes slow. If you move the fabric fast, then it goes fast. Wow. Does so that come with your I'm, sewing machine or is that something you have to purchase separately? I think uh, this here is probably a Bernina thing. Uh, but I've seen it on a path, so it's basically all these sewing machines have started offering this kind of thing. So basically, let me just do this real quick. I'm going around the edges, but I have to go slower. So if you are a novice, then you can do this a lot faster. You can do this slower. You know, you don't have to go as fast as I'm going. And you can go back and forth if you want to. And I'm using it to make appliques, not to do uh, freehand motion, free motion quilting. And if I, I'm gonna let it turn so you guys can see. Yeah, that does so remind I can me. Use it as an applique. All right, so I'm gonna take it off and show you guys just a little bit I did. Welcome, sewing in earnest and made by Laquana. I hope I said that right. Welcome. Hi, Our Laquana. We are meeting with Andrea at Sew to Fit. All we'll right, so update. let me turn this back up. Sorry, you guys. Uh, I'm so high tech, I'm using a makeup bag. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> so now that is how I am doing my yoke. Okay, so this, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear oh. you. Okay, so this is my yoke. And this is appliquing, instead of it being free motion quilting, I'm actually make these, all these little pieces into appliques to uh, show that through. That, that is very it's cool. <laughs> so that is, when it's done, it's just going to show little pieces 
of uh, pink through there. Yeah. All right, there's a plane flying over. <laughs> so that's that's the sewing technique we included in this little short. <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Welcome everyone. Welcome all the new new people on. Welcome. Roz says yes. We hear you. Okay, great. Good. Okay, good, good. thank you. Good. Okay, for me, I'm incorporating um, four new sewing techniques, um, okay. which are the wave tucks, which you see at the top left there, and then the fabric cutout, which I haven't done yet. The wave tucks are going to go in front of the bodice, the top um, front, and then the bow tucks is what, something that you introduced me to, Andrea, when you sent the, the photos from the book, so thank you. I thought that was super cute. And You that, did a great job. Thank you. That goes on my yoke on the center yoke. Uh, okay. Samina asked, is the freehand yoke backed with something, Andrea? Do you have to No, I'm not going to back it with anything, Samina, because uh, it already is going to have the lining for the yoke. So uh, all of what is in the bag, this is wash away stabilizer. So any stitching and anything back there won't touch my skin because the yoke is already lined. All right. Okay, so um, those are the four sewing techniques that I incorporate. I've never done them before, and I wanted to learn something new, so I incorporated that. Um, I did block quilting, which was I thought was the easiest, but it was actually, you know, not as easy as it looked, for me anyway. <laughs> it's my first time ever doing quilting, and I wanted to incorporate storytelling um, in my quilt. So I did, what I, um, what I did was I put some, I wish I sent you that photo. I'm going to show you guys how I did, um, how I transferred. I, I put photos in there. I printed out photos and then ironed it on to fabric, little square fabric, oh. and then put it into my, you know, the block quilt. So here I'm going to show you guys how I did it. Um, I bought a special fabric transfer paper and I printed it. I, you know, I played with the pictures first and then I printed it out. And then, you know, like I said, it's all storytelling photos, everything that happened to me during COVID. Um, and mm -hmm. I cut up the pictures. And then what I did is I already cut up the fabric and I just laid it out and then placed the pictures facing down onto the fabric. And so you'll see me there um, just putting the pictures down. Hello, Carla. And then just ironing um, the the transfer paper onto the fabric and I just slowly peeled it so that yeah that's me having to wear a mask now you know because it's <laughs> mandated in our city so um and that's my husband he had graduated while we were in COVID we had a virtual graduation and this one uh, it was just when it fir COVID first happened and we were you know mandated to stay home um I had to uh -huh. run to church so these are just you know little different um, photos that happened um, during COVID. And so I incorporated that. And then I had cut fabrics two inches in width um, and just however long the remnant fabric was. And then I would line them up and then I, you know, cut, did a straight cut just so they could all be even. And then I sewed them all together, you know. Wow. Yeah, I sewed them together. And then I had this special ruler um, that was really cool. I happened to, I found it at Walmart because we went to Walmart for one of my daughter's craft things. Mm -hmm. And I found this ruler and it was in the quilting section. That's why I was thinking, okay, maybe this will help it make it easier. So after I finished sewing um, my fabrics together, I laid it out on my cutting, cutting board. And you see, I am still sewing. Yes, I was sewing several <laughs> pieces. I did lay them out in a certain um, order, and you will archive this blouse for historical. <laughs> yeah, I should archive this blouse for historical purposes. There's so much history in there now. So now that all the fabrics are sewn together, I laid it out horizontally, and this this ruler had slits in it, and I thought that was the coolest thing. So I just followed it and cut it two in exactly two inches apart using those slits. So it had measurements at the bottom, and so there it is. And now I'm trying to lay it out. Um, that was actually kind of challenging. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I now did, I see how you got all those little small. I actually pieces. ended up taking some apart so I can use it uh. in between. <laughs> see, I didn't think about that at first. But then, you know, 
and then I would just I use three squares and I cut it um, and trimmed it just so that the photo part would be perfectly you know aligned yes, yes and aligned and then I started aligning it pinning it and then sewing it together like I said I I give so much respect to the quilters it was my first time <laughs> I thought it would be easy because it would be just block. Um, but then I ended up laying out the fabric patterns just so it could be different in certain areas. And I trimmed it um, with fabric. And that's the back piece. So that's my so line. So that the inside of the, Oops. oh, you line this. Are you making that's a it line. Yeah. A, an over blouse, kind of like a jacket? Or are you making it into a? It's um, the lining. Oops, sorry. It's the lining. Um, I'm sorry, what was your question, Andrea? Uh, my question is, um, because of the weight of the block quilting inside of it, along with lining, are you turning it into more like an over blouse or a lightweight jacket? Yes. Sort of? Yes. I thought okay. it'd be, maybe it'd be something for my grocery shopping or something, you know? Um, yes. I did buy batting. I guess it's called batting. I'm not sure. Yes. Um, initially, and then I was like, no, I'm not going to use that. Because nah. <laughs> The Texas heat is just so hot. I was like, no, I'm going to eliminate that and just keep it as it is. So can, I gonna... add, um, can I add something to that? Since you're sure. doing all that work, um, I have a suggestion to make it reversible. Maybe you can make all of the end seams on the front, turn those into finished seams, uh, bound, self-bound seams or Hong Kong finished seams on the inside so that you can turn it to the outside. Because when you do that sleeve, the way you're going to do the band on the sleeve, mm -hmm. it can be literally used for both sides. You beat me to it because that was something I, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that <laughs> that was going to be the next process. Yes, <laughs> I was thinking about how I would make it reversible. You, you beat okay, me to we'll it. talk. So yeah, <laughs> good job, good job. <laughs> Seeing kind of the, having the same vision that I do. <laughs> Welcome everyone that's new. We are meeting with Andrea uh, with Sew to Fit and we are giving our project update and we just finished sharing our um, some of our sewing techniques that we incorporated into our uh, Marthy <laughs> Great Mind. Thank yes. you, Roz. <laughs> Thank you, Roz. Um, incorporate into our uh, Marthy Remnant Challenge. And mm -hmm. we are using Marthy 0116 um, and modifying it, you know, according to our style aesthetics. So, so far we're having a lot of fun. Um, we're going to talk yes. more. Next week we're going to talk about what we learned about ourselves through this. You know, oh. <laughs> um, what we learned about ourselves. Because every project, like I said, I, I really wanted to incorporate storytelling into this project. And I wanted us to share about what we learned and, you know, kind of give an update um, about how we're all doing. Um, yes. And also, I guess... Do you guys have any questions while well, I have Andrea on? Um, she is just, she has a wealth of knowledge and she's just very talented. She, I call her the queen of fit. Um, <laughs> and that's why I I am just so happy that she's on to share. Um, oh, got another plank flying by. <laughs> you want to show the uh, video of the, how I did the changes on my pattern? Yes. Using my, yeah, that yes. is up since uh, for people who are just now coming yes. in. Yes, welcome for those that just came in. Mapping in Style and Vitamax. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so Andrea's going to show us a video. Uh, a video? Oh, I'm sorry. What were you could add videos, but I oh, do you have send it a video to me? if I could. I mean, send it I'll to me. Okay, wow, that's <laughs> great. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could add videos. So this Can is you? Well, I, it's coming yeah. to you now. But okay. wait, wait, wait. Not that's not a video. <laughs> oh wow, you got me. See, look at that. Every every week you can Hello, Mr. Going. T. See, this is not my <laughs> platform, you guys. This is Anne's platform. <laughs> okay. I'm still learning. So, I'm wait. still learning. <laughs> okay, so here it comes, and this is for you. While I while I tell you about the uh, what I did to this fabric for some of the yeah. people who just now came in, <laughs> I like to kind of make the fabrics into what I want, and I can't wait to next week to tell you what I learned about myself or to share with you how 
this project, what this project has done for me with what's going on with Kobe, which is what I call her, him, <laughs> it. <laughs> So I'm excited about that. Did you get the video yet? You know what? Okay. The, I, I'm kind of scared because I have to download the video onto my oh, phone. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Well, then so, let me just, um, so what I did is I usually take the picture. You can show the picture again then. Okay. Which picture is this? Yeah. The one with me wearing it in front okay. of the, uh, with the drawings on All it. All right. Okay. So what I normally do is I, after I do the tissue fitting and when I'm ready to start determining where I'm going to put all of my uh, different fabrics and everything, I first go to my pattern and decide how many pieces I want to break it down into. So in order to determine where I want to create new design lines, I use my mirror to, I mean, I use my pictures and I use my eye pencil, my, my iPad, and I take the markup tool and I start drawing on it and I uh, determine where those lines are going to be. So you can see in the back, I know I have a sway back or so to speak, I have a larger rump, which is really not a sway back. That fabric is not, doesn't have a center back seam and mm -hmm. it doesn't have darts. So I needed to make sure that it's still going to go over my uh, barrier and still be able to fit my center back because I like that to fit a little bit closer to my body and so I did the seam at the waist in the back so that I could take a little wedge out to cause it to curve more and then underneath in order to, lower, to make the fabric heavier because some of these fabrics are too light to hang on their own and I like it to hang without flowing away too much. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to put that facing in it. On the uh, side seam, you can see where the pocket is. I have those black lines, and I drew on the seam lines that are already there. Then I added the extra to flow into the orange that's on the back. Now, that center back seam, you can see down at the bottom, that orange, that's going to be a, uh, I shouldn't tell you guys right now. No, I'm going to hold that too. I'm going to hold that one for you. <laughs> So a lot of fun things coming up. A lot of fun things is going to happen. Um, all right. So, Andrea, can you tell us the added bonus to the challenge that um, so much fun oh. just added? <laughs> You're going to let me do it this yes, week? Yes, you do it this week. Okay. So the, the challenge is a give, it has a giveaway added to it now. Uh, a nice little treat from So Much Fabric, who's here on the live stream. Uh, she is going to be offering a $25 gift certificate in two categories. The first category is for who uses the most remnants from So Much Fabric in their garment. And that means, and I don't know, you got a quilt on the inside of yours. <laughs> but that's a good thing because Anne can't win. Neither can I. So <laughs> she's going to choose from the person who has the most. And the viewers for the second $25 gift certificate is going to be chosen here on Instagram through uh, viewer uh, choice to as far as what they think about which one should win the 25. So the most number of people will get the, that get the votes, most vote for that one person will get the $25 gift certificate in that category. So yeah, so, I think I explained that pretty well. I know, <laughs> Roz, Roz, Roz decided to spice it up. Roz with so much fabric, decided to spice Ooh. it up. Of course it's, it's optional. And then I think it'll be a lot of fun for those that, you know, love the challenge. Um, of, Don't forget of, to take the picture down in. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, so Ross decided to spice it up and make, you know, make it a little bit more fun for those that want to, want the challenge, you know, a little bit, yes. um, a bigger challenge. So, but this is all fun. Like we said, this project is for, for us to have fun, for us to express ourselves, um, to keep ourselves, our body, our mind, you know, kind of busy and, and yes. creating um, during this whole COVID thing and, and also, you know, for us to learn, have the opportunity to learn new things and just kind of keep inspiring each other. So, Ron Oh, says, that was right. Yeah. 9.30, uh, September, yeah, September 30th. 30th. So, That's you guys right. don't have to rush to next week or to the 30th. And it's finishing hers by the 29th. She has other obligations. 
I'm going to finish mine because I want to make sure the videos are ready for you guys. But you guys have all the way to the 30th of September to get your uh, entries in if you choose to participate in the giveaway. If you don't choose to participate, then we'll go with Ann's original statement. This is on your time. There's no deadline. This yep. is just to have fun. fun. Yep. Better Max mm -hmm. says, I love it. Kathy Spain says, yeah, <laughs> Roz. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be fun. So I normally ask our, um, our guests, I normally ask at the end, you know, to share an inspirational quote saying, <laughs> my son is waving here, um, <laughs> say, you know, share, but I just want to, you know, thank you for inspiring us today just because you showed up. You know, sometimes we know it's hard to just show up, but you did that. So thank you. Yes. Thank you, Andrea. Um, well, thank you. I, I I thought about my quote for today. Yes, you have I, one? Yes. Yay! I, <laughs> I, actually, it's not a quote. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who supports all of us as creators online because we don't see this as work to bring you guys this engagement. We find it to be very uh, satisfying. And so I just wanted to let you guys know from the deepest of my heart and I know from Anne, we really appreciate you guys watching our videos, supporting us on YouTube, coming and showing up live. Cause you know, it feels good to have other people receiving our words. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it's very nice. We, we just want to thank everyone for coming on, taking the time out of your day to come on and join us because you can do a million other things, but yes. you know, you chose to come on and be here with us today. So thank you. Um, thank you for yes. sharing that, Andrea. Thank you. Um, we all, like, I, you know, before I conclude, I do want to share that I do come on every Friday. So we're going to have Andrea again next Friday at one. Um, in August, the last Friday, we're going to have on with the Mad Jewel Jewelers Bench, um, teaching us how to do, you know, clean our diamond rings and an introduction to metalsmith jewelry. And last month, we had Diane with Lou Dot Sews, who, who touched upon pattern making. And just, uh, I, I, I'm so, I get so excited every week. Um, you know, we had Kathy on talk about sewing room organization, Roz with 10 ways to, um, uh, 10 reasons why to wardrobe plan. And then Carrie Kim, who taught couture pinning. So if you guys missed any of those videos, please go to my IGTV icon and check out their videos. Um, so again, like I thank you, everyone. And thank you, Andrea. Thank you for um, joining me today. And um, I always say, before I leave, please <laughs> reach out to one person today just to see how they're doing. Text them, FaceTime them, you know. Um, message them if you have to, but please um, just check up on one person today, okay? Yes. So you guys don't miss out next week with Andrea with more surprises. Tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow yes. Tomorrow night on my YouTube channel. That is, yes. and then go on the YouTube channel right now if you guys want to see. I have two processes right now for stitching already on there. That's this one from last week, and then tomorrow night at 6 p.m. live. Yes. Visit her channel. Visit her channel, you guys. Six o'clock. She's going live tomorrow, Saturdays. Check out her other videos. Um, and so at this point, I'm going to say bye, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And make sure to have call one person. Where you are, Anne. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Everybody have fun. <laughs> bye, Thank guys. You. Bye.